no more will these big tech companies or other big companies train foreign workers. They have to pay the government $100,000, then they have to pay the employee. So it's just not economic. If you're going to train somebody, you're going to train one of the recent graduates from one of the great universities across our land, train Americans, stop bringing in people to take our jobs. That's the policy here. $100,000 a year for H1B <laughs> That's visas it's a wrap after that. all of the big companies That's all we needed to hear. Board. That's it. <laughs> it's a wrap after that. It's done. Finito. All right, guys, this is your boy Joe back at it again, codingphase.com. Today we reacted to seeing in the news. Shoot, man, a hundred thousand dollars companies gotta pay for coming in, bringing somebody from any country, and say, hey, man, this is an essential tech worker, right? H one B visas, right? Um, look, man, I'll be honest with you guys, man. I do believe that we need to bring talent from other parts of the world um especially when they are an exceptional case a genius somebody that's gonna bring uh you know a lot of uh you know a lot of results and and, and just be an asset to the country and, and to the company right uh but i do believe that a lot of these companies do uh be going in and abuse the system i give you a great example i have here on twitter uh this is one of the images and, and just details that is just kind of amazing right when you think about it i mean amazon has you know like 9300 uh, approved in 2024 not that hey this is just the total of h1b visas this is the number of approved okay there's thousands and thousands of students that's coming out of college that cannot get a job and Amazon is going, you know what, man, <laughs> you know what, why would we hire anybody here? Let's just go in and get somebody from India, from China, from all these other spots, right? Um, of course, it's not just those countries, there's everywhere, right? Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, uh, South Africa, Nigeria, Poland. There's so many engineers in the world that want to come to the United States. Uh, but the truth is that right now, the country is not looking so good, okay? This is not a moment where uh, the country can actually afford to say, you know what, man, instead of giving jobs to the people here in the country, let's just go in and hire people from outside all the time. Right. Because there's not enough jobs for the people who are here. So if there's not enough jobs for the people that's here, why are you hiring outside of the United States? I mean, think about it like this. The, the layoffs that they did in 2023, 2024. Right. And they still looking to get approved uh, with H-1B visas. Nine thousand jobs. That's a lot of money that needs to stay here in the United States. This. You know, opportunities that people, I mean, imagine this, people go to school, leave out of school with a $80,000 debt, $100,000 debt, sometimes $200,000 debt, and then they come out and then they're like, man, I want to find a good job and I need to get paid pretty well because I need to pay off a $200,000 debt that, guess what, this is how the, the country works. Guess what? Now, companies are like, nah, you know what? We're not going to give you this job because, you know, why will we give you this job? You know, we could just go in and pay this guy, you know, $60,000, $70,000, right? Instead of paying you ninety, a hundred, a hundred forty. dollars Sometimes people get this mixed where they think that everyone that is on an H-1B visa is getting top pay, right? Or that they're geniuses or they're like the best of the best. No, a lot of these companies are abusing it. So guess what? If you are going to bring somebody here that is a genius or is an asset to the country and to the company, guess what? There's going to be ways that you could, you know, waive this $100,000 fee. But if you're just bringing in a junior level developer, some dude that is still like a year, two years in or somebody who's never even worked before and you're like, hey, man, we're just going to bring in this new person. No, there's enough people here already and there's enough people that is trained in this skill of being a developer or a software engineer right uh data scientist right there's a lot of people looking for jobs and looking for opportunities these opportunities need to stay here in the united states first then from there we need to start looking at you know who's out there 
that's going to help us grow. If somebody comes in and says, hey, man, this guy is essential to AI development, let's say, right? Or to the future of some type of tech for like military or something like that. Bring that guy. Bring him. Wave the whole $100,000. That's it. But if it's like some dude that's like resetting passwords, IT support, or, hey, man, this guy is working at AWS, you know, freaking setting up cloud. Do you know how many people could do that here in the United States? A lot. <laughs> okay. There's a guy that's getting flown from freaking Antarctica to not say any country, right? But being flown from Antarctica to here to the United States to do front end development where there's a huge amount of people that can do front end development here. Okay. Now, like I said, I'm not against people coming to this country because I came to this country. Let's put that out there, right? I wasn't born in the United States, but I do believe that the country is in a bad situation right now, economically, okay? So we need to have the people that's already here working and then from there being able to get to have opportunities, right? Because you can't go in and say, well, I've been here for 20 years working in this country, or I've been here, my family's been paying taxes into this country for 50, 100, 200 years. Who knows, right? And then from there, you go in and say, well, now that I've contributed to this country, I don't qualify for any of these jobs. I can't get any of these job opportunities because the companies are so money hungry, right? that they rather go in and pay anybody else from outside of the United States and bring them here. And a lot of times it's to pay them cheap, right? Cheap labor. Now, someone might say, well, that's not the case for every situation. And you're right. It's not the case for every situation, but there's a lot of companies who are abusing this. Okay. If you're going to give a 60 to a hundred thousand dollar job to anyone, give it here in the United States to somebody that's already here and went to school for that. You already made us pay into a hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars in student debt, right? Where some of these kids cannot even freaking function after that. Give them the job. Forget about me. I'm, I'm fine. Right. But give them the, the, the freaking job or give jobs to people that's trying to come out of poverty. That's here in the United States that have the knowledge, have the capacity to learn the skills. Right. Also, too, we need to get this shit out of the way. Right. A lot of people will be saying like, well, man, you know, in China and in India, they're geniuses. No, they're not geniuses. They're just people that apply themselves and work hard. There's people like that here in the United States, too. OK. But now we need to start going in and taking those people and putting them to the forefront and say, hey, you know what? This guy that works hard, that's willing to learn, let's go and train him. Let's go in and make sure that, that he has opportunities. Because we got sold on this idea that if you have a degree or you graduate high school, which was like the bare minimum back in the days, or hey, you, you, you're you a hard worker, you're going to get to places. Unfortunately, the best jobs are in tech and the best jobs in tech are not going to people who live here now, you know, and again, for anybody that's watching this for, you know, any country, right? Put yourself in people's shoes. That's here. I give you an example, India, because it's 70% of the people that's on H1B visas that, that will be affected by this is most likely going to be Indians. Um, but put yourself in the shoes. India is growing. The economy is growing, right? The country itself is growing. It's getting to a point where, you know, it's, it's going to be a superpower one of these days, right? It's a great country. A lot of smart people and, 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 you know, people that work hard is from over there, right? Shout out to all my Indians. But imagine this. Now companies in India decide, you know what? Instead of us going in and start giving opportunities to the Indians here, let's go and give it to Pakistanis. Let's go and give it to people in Nepal. Let's give it to people in Thailand. How would you feel? This is the problem. A lot of times people don't put themselves in other people's shoes and never really understand like why people are pushing for this. It's not just like, well, we just don't want Indians here. No, it's that people here have these jobs as good jobs. And this is where the, the world is going to. Right. And it's not right. And it's not fair that 
People who are qualified here cannot get these jobs because these companies are greedy. It's the same reason why all of the manufacturing jobs were sent to China and now China's booming, right? And here people that could be working at factories or doing things in, in automation, they can't find a job in that. Now the same thing is happening with tech. They're trying to do the same thing. Now, someone might say, well, you know, this is going to backfire because at the end of the day, you know, what these companies is going to do is they're going to start hiring more people remote and start putting a team in India, a team in, in China, a team in Pakistan, a team in this, this. Listen, guys, they're going to put a stop to that shit, too. OK, this is just the beginning. Those remote jobs where people just offshore everything, they're going to put a stop to it. Okay, like it or not, it's just the United States cannot subsidize everything for everybody else. Everybody else is getting rich while the American is getting poorer. Everybody's getting opportunities because that's what was the point of a globalization to go in and, and create a global economy. But the United States is not getting paid back from that global economy. We're actually losing jobs and losing money and, and, and the dollar is almost worthless now. We're getting to a point where we have to change this shit. Okay. And I say that me being myself an immigrant, right? So I do agree that we want to bring more people from other parts of the world that's going to be an asset to the country. But at the same time, we need to first take care of what's here. There's opportunities right now that are being given away because these companies are money hungry. This has nothing to do with Indians, with whatever other countries out there. I love everybody. The point is these companies are literally money hungry. Okay. They rather go in and, 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 and you know, put it over somebody's head a visa where they could exploit them because believe it or not. They love that shit. They love to put pressure on people. I mean, think about it like this. An American that's that's here, right? U.S. citizen, right? Somebody that works in this country. You think they're going to go in and be like, well, they're going to overwork me and, and have me on a salary and have me here till 7, 8 o'clock at night and want me to do this and that on the weekends. You think they're going to go in and, and do all of that without getting paid? No. But when they go in and they put... A H one B visa, dude, and in a team, they overwork them. Okay, they love doing that because they can't do that to the average American. The average American is not gonna fucking stand for that shit. So they love having these type of workers in here, and it's not because it's like, oh, they're such a hard worker, and, and Americans can't do the job. No, it's like they love to exploit people. That's what it is. Okay, they love to exploit people, and guess what? This country is not is not going for it no more. Okay, if you want to have somebody that's here, and you say, "Well, this guy is essential to us," pay the fucking fee. Now you're gonna have to pay a tax to the United States and to the U.S. people because we are the ones that's buying all of these products. None of these countries, from anything from Apple, from you know software as a service, all of these services here. We, the American people, are the ones that pay for this fucking shit. So <laughs> we buy the products, right? And then we don't have the benefit to go in and even get the jobs at some of these companies. That don't make no sense. That shit is a wrap, okay? You like it or not. There's no, there's no point of us going in and supporting a company like Apple or even Amazon. And at the end of the day, it should be like an ecosystem. Right. If we have money, we can go in and buy your products. But if you go in and not give us opportunities, don't share some of, uh, 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 of the, the actual things that you're making the profit in some type of way, either by giving us a job. Guess what? We're going to tax your ass. You're going to have to go and pay for this shit. OK, and I can't wait until they stop the bullshit of all these companies setting up headquarters in Ireland. I don't want to hear that shit either. Y'all going to have to start paying taxes in here. Y'all going to have to go in and literally start fucking hiring people from here. Because we're not paying for your fucking expensive ass products. And then on top of that, we get zero benefits. I'm out of here.